From thatching to stonemasonry or metalwork, Britain's master craftsmen were central to every aspect of life. Down the centuries, their workmanship has defined the fabric of this country, from the grandest cathedral to the simplest of tools. Iron Age man, every time it made an iron instrument, they had to do this. Yeah. There are still guardians of these crafts working today, who are dedicated to taking the long tradition of these skills into our modern world. I'm going to rotate it round, keeping the bevel on the work. In this series, complete beginners with a genuine passion to learn will be given an intensive introduction by some of these experts. You need to get that power into it, rather than tickling it. But can a complete novice master even the basic elements of the craft in a short space of time, however intensive? You go through hell trying to get it right, and then all of a sudden, one morning, it'll just click. And will they have acquired the skills to make something that is both beautiful and useful? I amazed myself, and I kept looking at it and thinking, did I do that? I can feel myself getting excited already because actually blacksmithing is something that I've always wanted to do more of. I've seen a bit of it, I've tried it, and I used to work with silver years ago, and I love the way that silver responds to being beaten with a hammer and then it moves and changes and you can shape it. And there is something magical about the way that with blacksmithing, you take this molten metal, it's very elemental, raw material, and then with skill and a lot of energy, turn it into objects that are useful and domestic and intimate. The blacksmith craft was once essential to almost every tool or implement conceivable. And for centuries, the local smithy played a pivotal role in every community. Don Barker has been a blacksmith for over 30 years. He's a master craftsman and has made ironwork for the royal family, Westminster Abbey and St Paul's Cathedral. And blacksmithing is in his blood, with both sides of his family working in the trade for the past 300 years. And it's here, in this forge taken over especially for this project, that Don will teach three beginners the elements of his craft. Well, there it is, the blacksmith forge here in South Ferriby on Humberside. And this low, fairly dilapidated building is right on a busy road, surrounded by buildings. And that's how blacksmiths always were. In fact, that one's been there for hundreds of years. Because blacksmiths didn't just do a specialist job stuck away on the equivalent of an industrial estate. They were the hub of the community around everything else revolved. Everything that needed a metal tool of some kind, every metal component from a nail to a spigot, had to come from the blacksmith. Hello. Hello. Be with you in a minute. Just a sec. Morning. Good morning. You must be Don. I'm Don Barker, yes. How Good do you do? Pleased to meet you. And you. I mean, in day-to-day -day life, now, do we need blacksmiths? Is it an indulgence? We do, yeah. What for? Well, there are things that can't be done by anybody else, really, and mainly making quality gates, making quality ironwork, would a, a beautifully made gate be ridiculously expensive or would it be within the reach of, of well, most people? Well, it depends people? how you look at it. Yeah. The most expensive gate that I've ever made was £50,000. That's quite a lot of money. Which is a bit out of the range yeah. of the majority of people. But then we've made beautiful gates for £800. In a very short while, you're going to have three people turning up. No idea what they're going to be like. That should be fun. What will you look for? What will you look for in that first um, day? First of all, they need to be enthusiastic and they need to be wanting to have a go. Yeah. Secondly, they need to have a sort of innate ability for hand-eye coordination. And how long will it take for you to work out whether they'll be any good or not? Uh, about an hour. No. Yeah. Our three would-be blacksmiths each have their own particular reasons for wanting to learn this craft. Dominic Branch comes from London. He's done a variety of different jobs and is currently a part-time market trader. Morning, more. He's always loved metal and is hoping that the craft of blacksmithing is the key to a better life. Uh, these are implants. Um, I make a, a small incision 
Uh, they feed it through, there's a little ball on the end, and then the flesh just tightens up around them. Everyone's got a, a passion for certain things, but I like metal. I, I like the way it shines, I like the feel. It's manly. <laughs> it's really manly. At the moment, I'm working in Camden on the market stalls. Good morning. Good morning, sweetheart. If I had the skills of a blacksmith, I'd be able to generate my own little pieces of art that I can tell to the, the wanting public. I mean, how nice would that be? Nice? Yes. <laughs> I want to wake up in the morning, look forward to going to work. I don't want to wake up and dread it. I want to go in and enjoy my day. Hugh Gallagher has recently returned from Spain to start a new life following the breakdown of his marriage. I have a son of, uh, of 11 and I have a daughter of three. My son understands why I'm here. Every time I speak to my daughter, she says, well, am I coming home tonight? Like that breaks my heart. Hugh is an architectural illustrator, but hopes an intensive course in blacksmithing will rekindle a passion for sculpting in metal, which he briefly but impressively pursued as a teenager. This one here is the first one I ever produced. It's a, it's a cross of our Lord. We have this one, which is the, the second one I ever made in metalwork. I think I was 16 or 17 when I did this one. To pursue uh, something that I, that, that I enjoyed doing so much when, uh, in my younger years, it's given me a new energy. Jill Fewing works as a part-time museum educator and also looks after her elderly aunt and mother. Her grandfather was a blacksmith and she wants to see if his smithing genes have been passed on to her. I come from a line of quite creative people. My grandfather could make things and build things. My dad, my grandmother, my mother can all do stuff. And you come to me and you think, I don't know if I can. Now is the time to try and find out whether I can really do something or not. I am just about still fit enough, and my family are still well enough for me to have time to try. So the doorway to step through is now. It takes an apprentice four to five years to qualify as a blacksmith. These three have just six weeks to master the basics of the craft from managing the furnace to forging metal into objects that are both useful and beautiful. At the end of the six weeks, they'll be judged on a final project, and the winner of that will have the opportunity to go on and work alongside professional blacksmiths on the restoration of a prestigious National Trust project. Hello. How are you doing? I'm Monty. Dominic, pleased to meet you. Dominic, hello. Sure. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Hugh. OK, fine. We're here. We're coming around the corner. But that is a long way ahead. And according to Don, if they lack basic hand-eye coordination, they're going to fall at the first hurdle. This is Don, who is going to be teaching you everything he can. Well, I think the best thing to do is to learn to make something very basic, which is a nail, which is something that around the Birmingham area was done day after day after day. When they'd done the quota, they could go home. What was the quota for a day? Uh, well, I think for a decent-sized nail, it was 60 an hour. I want you to make the standard nail I'm going to show you. I want you to make 10 an hour, and that will prove to me whether you've got the potential and capability of becoming a blacksmith. Controlling the temperature of the metal is the key to blacksmithing. If it's too cold, the metal won't be pliable enough to work. But if it gets too hot, it then burns and turns brittle once it's cooled down. So basically, we're going to put a taper on this. I turn it every 90 degrees, keep it square. And so we don't lose it, we can break it off like that. And then we're going to put it in there and forge the head out of what sticks out. In under 60 seconds, a few judiciously aimed blows transform an iron rod into a nail. So that's basically the principle of the thing. Now they've seen how to do it, the trainees have a go. Move further onto your anvil there. OK, and so I hit it about... Oh, anywhere, I, I hit, can make it more tapered. Do the point first. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then when you've got a point on it, work back. That's it. Not in the force, 
square, it's going round. You're pushing hammer stuff, aren't you? And aren't you finding it strange and sort of uncomfortable? It's a hell of a lot harder than it looks. You think a simple nail, but everything from how you hold the tongs, even, I find holding the tongs quite awkward. I need to get more of a... You've okay. got to be confident. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. I'm quite surprised you've thrown him in the deep end of this. It really is. OK, here's a proof i just yeah. do it. The thing about it is that each of these processes is a very simple blacksmithing process. You put it all together, you've got a nail. Yeah. How's that feeling? Excellent, thank you. But every time you hit it, for every one good one, there's three bad ones right. that you've got to put right. 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 And that's the scary bit. This is Dominic's third. That's Hugh's second. And Jill has made one, almost. Damn it. You see that happening. Rats. Mm. Don't do this. <sighs> After an hour of energetic nail making, it's time to down tools. OK, folks, hammer's down. And we'll have a look at what's uh, been done. Dominic's nails are the first to be scrutinised. Right, here we've got two, four, six, seven nails, good squares. The heads are a little bit iffy, but that's the most difficult part. So, well done. Excellent. Next, Hugh. Mm. Not quite as pretty as they might be, but nevertheless, you've done very well. I think that's great. Lovely. And lastly, Jill. Right, here we've got really well-shaped nails, good square taper. Heads could need a bit more work on them. But I'd like to say that I think you've done really well. I'm very pleased. And, uh, <laughs> strangely enough, I think you've all got potential. I was Good. hoping that... It's the beginning. Right. And now the final test. Do they do the job they're designed for? One of the sort of absolutely essentials of any piece of craft work is it's got to do the function for which it was made. Absolutely, yes. No matter what it looks like... That's the whole we... point of the exercise, yeah, really. Yeah, it's got yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah. Right, they go into the stretcher, which is this bit here. Does that look good, or does that look good? I think it looks good. Right, next yeah. one, please. That's it. Beautiful. Oh, that's fantastic. Is it, is it Absolutely a nail brilliant. or is it a wedge? Is it's that a nail. good or what? No, it's fantastic. <laughs> Do you and have actually, purpose? They're, they're very, very beautiful objects. You've pitched up. You've worked metal. You've made an object that has a finite end and you've used the object. I think that's a very, very satisfactory start. If I were you, I'd be pleased. I mean, I was fairly confident that knowing that I'm going to be able to do it, but, yeah, you've always got to have that fear in your back, you know, back of your mind. Will I be able to do it? Won't I be able to do it? How hard is it going to be? No-one likes to walk away and admit defeat, especially me. Today was really good. I enjoyed it. But I'm concerned I'm going to hold the others back if I'm not quick enough on what I do, and if I speed up too much, I'm not going to have the strength to get everything done that I want to do. Now we have so much to learn. It's just amazing how much it takes to do a nail. But uh, after your first or second or third attempt, you feel like you're actually achieving something, you're actually learning the, the skill itself. They've all passed Don's initial test, but making nails is just the beginning. Every apprentice will master a few basic skills in the forge very early on. And one of the first that they have to do is a scroll, which is taking a bar of metal and learning to heat it and hammer it into this beautiful fluid scroll. Now, the art of that is partly just turning the metal, but the really important thing is to get a sinuous curve. It looks simple. It's quite tricky but it's absolutely essential. But before they can get started, they must learn how to control the blacksmith's most important ally, the forge, which should burn at a constant 1,200 degrees. In order to manage the fire properly, you need to have coal black on the top so it doesn't heat you, mm -hmm. and it keeps the heat into the fire. Yeah. When you put the bar into the fire, if you put it in slowly, it pushes the fire out of place like that. So you need to push it in quickly so that it punches a hole. Yeah. 
in the actual fire mound and it doesn't damage it. And the better you can keep that nucleus of the fire, the, the hotter the fire will be in a...